In the meantime, we are joined by the former Chief Prosecutor at the International War Crimes Tribunal and President of the International Crisis Group, Louise Arbour, who's with me in the studio. Louise Arbour, you have experience of uh, bringing people from the Balkan states um, to trial. Why is the international community so reluctant to move on Sri Lanka? Well, the, the framework is not quite in place. Now, Sri Lanka, of course, is not a party to the Rome Statute that created the International Criminal Court. Uh, the Security Council, which created the two tribunals with which I was associated for the former Yugoslavia and for Rwanda, has shown no interest in getting involved on the file in Sri Lanka. So basically, apart from an initiative, in particular by the Secretary General, to launch an international investigation, there's just no existing framework for these issues to be dealt with. And that's partly because the Security Council has elements within it that are themselves very resistant to, uh, to bringing anything, any pressure on Sri Lanka. Yes, I think it's, it's pretty clear that at the height of the war last year, the Security Council uh, was not prepared to seize itself of, of the matter, probably on the assumption that even if a few members of the Council uh, would have been prepared to act, uh, they would not have been enough support and possibly even blockage by others. You now have this rare coalition of uh, really global human rights organizations, Amnesty International, um, Human Rights Watch, uh, your own um, ICG, uh, who are trying somehow to bring pressure for war crime trials to be considered. What success are you likely to have? Well, at this point, I think everybody is calling for a credible, fair, independent, international investigation. Sri Lanka has a very long history of impunity, and any uh, national initiative in Sri Lanka would be bound to fail and certainly would carry no credibility, frankly, I think, with those most immediately concerned, which is the people of Sri Lanka themselves, including uh, the Tamil population. You know, in, in particular, to document credibly the horrors inflicted by the LTTE mm -hmm. uh, could not be done by the Sri Lankan government. This mm -hmm. would carry no credibility, and in fact, it could lead to revisionism and, and uh, uh, you know, an impression or romanticism about the actions of the LTTE. So the gov it's in the government's own interest to make sure that this is done credibly and independently. But is, is there any evidence that if a fair inventory were carried out into the atrocities committed by the Tamil Tigers, that the government would feel any confidence in having its own side investigated? Well, it would have to be. I, th I think for this to be done credibly, uh, there would have to be a very thorough investigation into the emerging but very uh, credible allegations of involvement by the Sri Lankan armed forces in the perpetration uh, of certainly what would appear to be war crimes, attacks on mm. hospitals, attacks on humanitarian convoys, and the very deliberate shelling of civilians in these so-called no-fire zones. Uh, again, how can anybody expect a government to conduct this kind of investigation mm. of its own behavior when its entire history has been one of denial and impunity? The International Criminal Court is a, a, a relatively new institution but the process of looking into war crimes is as old as the Second World War and further back than that. You're a realist. Let's be candid. What are the, what are the chances that actually anybody in Sri Lanka will ever be brought to book for anything? You know, at this point, this is a war that, especially the last chapter of this long-standing conflict in Sri Lanka, was conducted with unprecedented mm. secrecy. Even if all we could achieve now is to collect the evidence that will tell the people of Sri Lanka themselves, their own history, and you could look at a lot of Latin American countries where it took decades mm. uh, for the truth to be exposed. I think we still have to remain engaged. Louise Arbour, thank you very much indeed for coming in. And we are still trying desperately to get in touch with the uh, Sri Lankan ambassador of the United Nations. He did give us an undertaking he would appear, and clearly uh, without a Sri Lankan government input, this is not an entirely balanced picture. Uh, so if we do manage to reach him before the end of the programme, we will indeed bring him to you.